Hey, Sarah, I'm so excited to be interviewing you today on the podcast. Really great to have you here. Uh, and I know we actually met face to face when Alicia and I were doing a book launch tour. So I got to come down to your place, uh, meet with you, connect with you a little bit and actually have a look at your retreat center. We ran one of our events in your retreat center. Yep. And when I was you know, looking around for people to chat about uh, in, our, in our podcast, chat within our podcast here, part of what we look for is people who are doing really well in business or who have strived ahead with what they want to get through in their business. And I know that there's a bunch of massage therapists who at some level have this vision in their brain of running a retreat center someday, of uh, either doing training or whatever it is themselves and having a center of their own. And so I really wanted to just chat with you because you're in that place yeah. I know that it's a whole lot of hard work. It's yeah. not always easy. And the journey to get here has had a whole lot of twists and turns and some, some adventures as yeah. well as some challenges. So I just thought, hey, it would be really great to have you on, talk about that journey a little bit and get to hear what it's actually like to move from working for yourself uh, on your own to having at where you are now having this, uh, this retreat centre. So maybe actually, do you want to start by just sharing what it actually looks like right now? What's the centre like? What's your role there? Uh, and how does it all fit together for you at the moment? Yeah, well, thank you so much for having us. And like you say, it was amazing to have you guys here, you and Leash, because I've watched you on Facebook and um, just to have someone and come and do that personal contact, it, it was just absolutely amazing. So thank you for coming out. That's a pleasure. Um, it was great. <laughs> absolutely. So where are we at right now? So um, it's taken us, uh, I think it's been about a two-year process um, just to get things through council, and I'm definitely happy to share that with you um, later on down the track. But right now, we're operating a two bedroom, both queen size um, beds in the bedrooms with private en suites, accommodation for up to four people. We've got a day spa, which is where I do all of our therapies. We've got a self contained um, shared kitchen space to my left. Um, and then we have this beautiful big room, which is where you and Leash came and did the workshop. Um, and it overlooks the paddock. So we're out in Axdale on the outskirts of Bendigo and we've deliberately chosen this because we want to connect back with nature and just give people the experience of a natural place to go. Um, we, we literally, and I think I remember you filming this, we literally have kangaroos and birds um, when I'm teaching yoga that, that you can see in, on the property and it's just that feeling of wellness that brings it back. Absolutely. That's where we are right now. Yeah, and I remember yeah. when we were there and we were doing the training, Leisha and I, yeah. and it's like we were facing the window. So everyone was yeah. sort of sitting in the window facing us, but we could just see this, all the people looking at us, and then the backdrop at the background. And there were, there were kangaroos hopping yeah. past at some point and yeah. the birds and stuff, and it was so distracting because it's just so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's it really, really great. It's absolutely. Yeah, it was yeah. really fantastic. I so was teaching yoga the other day and um, there's five ducks and the five little ducks come up and then um, the other morning a magpie comes up. So it really is about connecting back with nature. Yeah, and it's yeah. a beautiful part of the world in general, Bendigo right. being out in the country like that. For those who don't know, uh, it's a country town in Victoria, probably, what, two hours from Melbourne, three hours, something oh, like that. Once you're on the colder, an hour and a half. Hour and a half, there yeah, you go. Melbourne. Yeah, Yeah. so it's not, it's not like super remote, but it is just a, a country town. Yeah. And then your place is even out of town. So it is in yeah. this beautiful sort of rolling hills, yeah. uh, grassland, some natural bushland around the place. Yeah. Really, really beautiful. So what, where did the journey start for you though, Sarah? Because yeah, I know you weren't for, even from that area originally. Is that right? No, I grew up in uh, Melbourne in, in the southeast suburbs. Um, where, so where did this journey start? It, it, it never intended to be what it was. It's just evolved and I've evolved with it. And thank goodness I've got a husband that's let me roll with it and he's evolving with me. <laughs> um, so... I'm pretty open about my past. I was really sick for a long time. So I was chronically sick and um, I always wanted to help people and I wanted them not to be able to go through um, the hell that I went through when I was growing up, if you like. Um, and I, I felt boxed in and I felt claustrophobic and I never really connected in the, in the suburbs. Mm. And then we had our first child and we looked at each other, my husband and I, and went, um, if we don't move now to the country, we're never going to move. So we took a plunge. I was working as a youth worker at the time. I was a burnt out youth worker because I, I just take people's stuff on and I'm not good at, at, at um, deflecting. Um, so I decided to be a teacher. But then, you know, as fate has it, I become pregnant. So I never actually worked as a teacher um, in a school. But I loved learning. I, I completely loved learning. And a lot of my journey was about self-healing. 
So I decided to do a yoga teacher training course, not with the intention of um, teaching, but just with the intention of learning. And then the more that you practice, like with massage, the more that you practice, the more that you understand the body, the more that you can work with the body and work more therapeutically. Um, so this idea came out where maybe we could play, make this multi-modality place. So I love massage. I love kinesiology. Um, mm. I love yoga. So um, I've also got a background in community development. So how do we bring this together and make this really rich, vibrant place of healing um, where people can just kind of choose where they're directed to? And the timing wasn't right. Um, I had another couple of kids and then my husband got unwell and I, I got tired of looking after him, went on a journey one day, <laughs> went down to the local pub down in Axdale, sat there and went, I have to move. I have to be here. So we um, packed up and lived in a caravan <clears throat> for two years with some wow. darling angels and built this place that we have now. And now it's grown. So I got a, um, a scholarship to work in an Ayurvedic hospital in India and with the support of the senior doctors, um, they um, have helped me grow and now we're putting on more accommodation and more, more treatment rooms um, and more yoga places. So we really are creating a, a place of wellness. Wow, yeah. it's fantastic, yeah. isn't it? And what I love about that story is it's not like you set out with a plan to get where you are at the start, but the actual challenges and the, the journey that has been a tough one yeah. along the way, you've got that kind of personality and drive that's gone, you know what, these challenges are hard to get through, but I know I can help other people who might yeah. be in the future going to go through the same thing. I can help make their journey easier. And it's a real caring heart that you're displaying there, a caring heart, good at learning and good at being able to make a difference for other people doing the same thing. So that's fantastic. I really admire Thank that. You. What would you say, like along that journey, as far as business goes, yep. what would you say were the key things that helped you to set up the business side of things? Was there yep. any sort of specific um, training you did or, I don't know, books you read or anything like that? Has that sort yep. of it worked for you? The thing that really led me here was my my belief in what I'm doing and, and not getting, um, not succumbing to the fear. I had this idea as a yoga teacher that yoga wasn't enough to be able to heal properly. And, and in my past, I, I struggled with anorexia and an eating disorder. And go, yoga works with the mind, the body and the spirit. And I know when, when I massage, I massage very in intuitively as well and I'm completely connected with that person. But there was a, a huge gap. And for me, that gap was food. And Ayurveda, I didn't even know the word Ayurveda when I became a yoga teacher. So Ayurveda, for those that don't know, is about self-knowledge. Um, life knowledge. So we look at um, diet, lifestyle, body therapies, herbs, yoga as, as a therapy um, to, to heal with yourself. So I, I started looking, I started listening, I started reading, and then I um, started talking with this bloke down in Bendigo and he said, why don't you write a 10-week program and give us a manual and we'll run it. And I went, yeah, beauty. Okay, that, that's a good business decision. Still at home mum, you can get a little bit of cash on the side. Uh, yeah, love it, love it. Wrote it, I wrote it. We'd agreed on a figure. I went in and he said, yeah, no, I'm not paying you that. And I went, no, nah, no. Nah. Um, it, it's too close to my heart. Um, I'm giving up a lot of money. Well, for them, for me then, that was a lot of money um, because I, can't, I, I think that I'm worth more. Mm. And so there was a lot of fear attached to that, right? Um, and then someone else came and tapped me on the shoulder and said, go write an accredited diploma. And I did. And had I have known what I know now, how hard it was going to be, I might have had second thoughts. But I believed <laughs> in it and I swallowed it and I, I burnt the candle at both ends. Living in a caravan, riding at night with little kids, I wrote a diploma of Ayurvedic yoga teaching. That was the first part of the journey. So our business becomes um, multifaceted, if you like. So we've got our training now and then we've got our retreat, which is like a training base. So along the way, I needed to have my qualification in yoga, which is not nationally accredited because most of them aren't. Um, I, I needed to have some kind of nationally accredited course because I believe I, I teach at TAFE as well. So I believe in quality education and things that have um, been analysed and, and a, a good. Um, there's so many wishy-washy courses out there. <laughs> Um, I, like, I like things that I know are going to be structured and I'm going to get proper learning. So I went and did my Ayurvedic um, practitioner course, which was three years. 
And in between, I took up jobs. I worked at a day spa in um, Sorrento, which was incredible over summer. I worked at Bendigo Hospital just as a porter. Um, I did whatever I, I needed to do to bring in that little bit of cash to support the dream. And I read and I read and I listened and I love podcasts because I'm yeah. very visual and I like to watch and listen at the same time. Um, and then I, um, it, it just evolved from there. Lots of research. Yeah. And it sounds like, again, the, the story I'm hearing is that it wasn't like you had a huge plan at the start of what it was going to look like, but you had each piece brought that passion with it to move you forward. Yes. And you've almost like um, learned what you needed to at each stage and yes. then just worked really hard by the sound of things as well. Because yes. that's what passion does, right? It, it, we learn from it, but yes. it also it gives you that drive to be able to step up and do what it is that you need to do. And part of it is sacrifice, exactly what you're saying. I want people to hear that if they're listening to this. Yep. It's not like, oh, I'm in this place because it was all easy and I had this, I don't know, amazing opportunity and it all just happened. Actually, it might not have happened this way if you'd known what was ahead of you. It yes. was a whole lot of sacrifice, a whole lot of hard work. And sometimes that naivety is actually a good thing, right? Because you step in the passion, Definitely. you do what needs to be done, and you look back and think, oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. If I'd yeah. known what this journey was going to be like, maybe I wouldn't have chosen it so willingly. Yeah, um, and I, I don't know how I actually did it. If I look back, I don't know how I lived in a caravan with, with seriously, a one-year-old, a three-year-old and a five-year-old and write a nationally accredited diploma. I, I don't know how I did that. Absolutely but, amazing, but I did isn't that. it? Yeah, but I also know myself from Ayurveda and I know that I have, talking about a little bit um, diagnostically, I know that I have fire and I have that ability to burn mm. at both ends. And, and when you're saying about sacrifice, my husband isn't that same personality type, characteristic, if you like. So he's very earthy and water. And then I need to understand that his earth and water starts to balance that fire and intensity so I'm using my, my knowledge to help support my business and bring it forward and bring it forward. Um, and it definitely was a journey. I know even getting going down to the planning permit for council, like we, we were told at one stage we don't need a planning permit, so we went ahead with it. And then I, I just had this feeling, this is what I mean by listening to your intuition, I had this feeling that things weren't okay and I went, had a meeting um, with another department from council because we're doing accommodation, we're doing food, we're doing massage, body therapy. So I need to deal with building, planning, uh. environmental. So it's multifaceted. Um, and I don't know anything about this. So I've had to learn along the way and trust people. Um, and the lady at council came back and said, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. You actually do need a planning permit. So financially, that threw us back six months. Wow. Um, and time-wise, that threw us back six months. So in the meantime, um, you know, that little frustration, because I'm very intense, that frustration part I need to deal with. So I think about the life journey of this is patience, this is me having to learn patience along the way. Um, and then um, finding something that's going to meet our budget. So we have this, uh, I, I go source these units, right? So we're doing transportable units because we want an exit strategy just in case because this is our family home. Mm. So if, if things decide that we've had enough, we want, we want to be able to move. So we're doing transportable units. Um, and I found this amazing bloke down in Melbourne, jump in the car with my um, four-year-old then, give her, you know, okay, I know I teach nutrition, but I give her a packet of chips to shut her up, run down the car freeway <laughs> just before the kids who need to be picked up from school, see these units, yes, 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 love it. I build my budget around that, right? Find the money. Um, so I've got mega loans at the moment, um, but that's okay because I'm working at TAFE and I'm paying them off. Um, and then I realised that, hey, this guy's not a registered builder. I can't use him and I'm doing a commercial project. So my, uh, I'm back to the square one. So my wow. um, expenses end up going double. Um, so it's always just listen, just keep going. And when one door closes, another door opens, another door opens. And, and it mm. really is like that. Um, so we've just recently been given permission to go own a builder, which is amazing. So now we can put our tastes on it even more. So that door closed, another door opens, and it's just step by step by step by step, and, and it is getting there. Yeah, and that persistence is a huge part of it too because yep. nothing's ever as easy as we think it's going to be at the start. And if the first door that slams in your face stops the journey, then you never get anywhere. So no. being able to have that persistence to keep pushing through, to keep finding new ways of doing it is fantastic. Yeah. And I also love a couple of times you have mentioned 
it's been it's been a strain it's been a challenge but you have got a bit of a safety net behind you there like you mentioned you're a TAFE teacher and yes. you've got a partner who works yes and it's it's not that that makes it easy it's still a huge challenge but you're also being quite smart with the risk that you take on you're yes. looking at it going you know I've I do have food in the in the in the fridge and I can feed the kids and we've got a roof over our heads and then the risk goes on top of that yes. so it is it is risky it is a challenge but you're also using the resources that you've got. You're using what's in your hands at the moment to be able to leverage into this dream that you've got in front of you. I love it. Yes. Such an exciting place to be too. And, and I'm also thinking about my longevity because we just had someone come on the weekend and she stayed for Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, and I cooked for her all meals. I did um, two treatments a day. I taught her yoga. And uh, this is just me. And I, I'm going to burn out. Quite frankly, yeah. I'll burn out if we, if we have a combination like this and I keep working this intensively. So I looked at um, how can this be a viable project? So I looked at um, how qualifications are made. I, I believe in industry-based training. I believe in accredited mm. training, right? But also looked at what's out in the industry and thought most people need some kind of um, multi-modality to be able to work and I need someone that's going to be A, these are my requirements. So um, I, put, I developed a course to meet what I need um, in my business. And so I'm going to be able to start to um, train people in that course um, and they're going to be able to work back for me at the same time. So I feel like um, I'm giving them something, the opportunity to go and open a a day spa within um, however long it's going to take for them to study. And I'm getting staff at the same time that I know are trained up to the standard that I'm wanting, which is going to ease me out of the business. So then I can start to take on a more managing role instead of a hands-on role and start to grow the business and really give that love, care and attention to where, um, to, to where it's going to go to evolve. Yeah, and it is smart to be looking in that direction too because scaling up to run a retreat where you're just going to need to do more and more work yourself yeah. isn't long-term the smartest no. strategy. It's the, only the first step. And then being able to look at, well, how do I manage to get staff how do I manage to scale the business itself, not just the assets yeah. of the business, but the, the staff and the, the throughput is really powerful to look at. It's also interesting to me, you've mentioned you do training, you work at a TAFE, yeah. but you also run Ayurvedic training. Is that at the retreat? How does that yeah. work? Yeah. Um, I do a couple of things. So I, I, I believe in health and I believe in education. That, that's my passion. And I definitely believe in mental health. Um, so I do some free information workshops and that, that's just to give back because Ayurveda is not very well known yet within, within um, the Australian context. Um, so I do that here within this con- complex. Um, I do online training. So we do blended learning So w- mm. with our national accreditation. So people from all over Australia can do it and we can bring it worldwide, um, which, which is a brilliant way to be able to learn and train and then to bring it into your own community. And then we have our um, diploma of Ayurveda Day Spa Therapy where people are trained in Ayurvedic massage so they understand the strokes, the techniques, the oils because Ayurvedic oils are very herbal-based, a very like medicinal oil. Um, they understand that for the individual. Um, they understand Shiradara. It, it, James, one day I'm going to give you Shiradara. It's, um, and, and Leash, oh, you can love it. It's oil in the third eye and it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful treatment um, and facials. So we're, we're trying to make it um, multi, a multi-modality course for practitioners. Sounds absolutely fascinating. Like I think before we met, I'd probably heard the word Aveda, yeah. uh, but didn't really have a concept of what it meant or how it all fits together. And it sounds like a very, very holistic and quite different style yeah. of treatment or not even just treatment, but a style of, of living. Is that what yeah. you'd call it? Yeah, definitely. It, it, it's life knowledge and it's, um, it, it's completely holistic. It's individual. So I can't say that how I massage one person is going to be how I massage another person because I have a, a different body. I have different energy. I have different, well, that person eats different food. They, they have a different lifestyle and they have that different balance of energies within them. So how I work with them is going to be completely different to how I work with the next person that's going to walk in the door. Yeah, I think that's fascinating. And I guess like now is a good time to say it. If someone was listening to this and thinking, wow, this Ayurveda stuff sounds really interesting. I'm interested in actually learning more about this course that you run or more about it. Where would they find out more about that, Sarah? Yeah, so you're welcome to jump on our website. So the website is www.aligninghealth.com.au. 
or email me, um, info at aligninghealth.com.au. Um, and the way that we've structured the course, we're, we're using Moodle. I, I, when I did my Ayurvedic training, I, I was a mum with three kids all under school age. Yep. And I know I've got passion, but to learn, I'm learning a science. The Ayurveda is science of life. It really is. Um, it was full on. So I learned through Moodle. So I did it online and then oh. I travelled to Queensland and did, and did my practicals because you couldn't do it in Melbourne. It just didn't exist. Mm. Um, and then I travelled to New Zealand and did some practicals there. So I'm a huge fan of the online study, so the blended study. So we give all the knowledge part online for our courses and then people have the joy, hopefully, of coming here and you have to experience the treatments before you give. So we're, it, within our um, course fee, we've got accommodation for two nights and you get to experience the treatments and then we bring people in so you've got that completely practical, hands-on, almost semi-retreat, workshoppy kind of style that we're, we're teaching to. Sounds absolutely fantastic. <laughs> like, it sounds like learning would actually be a great experience. Besides what you're actually learning, the information, the process of going through a course like that with an online component and then coming in for a hands-on thing in such a beautiful retreat location too. Yeah. Like, what an amazing experience. I can imagine that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. We've got our first lot coming through this weekend and, yeah, very excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's great. And even that concept in itself is interesting to me. Like we obviously do a lot of training in a similar way. We have online components and in-person yep. components with the training that we do. And for business, it works really well because so much of what we teach is uh, more, what would you call it, more head knowledge, you know, not so much hands-on Definitely. skills. We don't, need to, we don't need to look at bodies and, and poke things. It's much more about keyboards and, and, I don't know, visuals and that sort of stuff. But when you're doing it as an online uh, program or an online component within a program that is such a hands-on thing, yep. do you find that still works really well? Like what have the challenges been around that? Around being online? Yeah. Yep. Um, I think the biggest challenge about doing online is people's commitment. And it's all very well to sign up for a course, but then you actually need to do it and life can get in the way. So you merely, to do online study, you really need to be dedicated and you need to set time aside. Um, and and I look at, I'm looking at it from an Ayurvedic perspective again. Um, most of us are fast-paced and we juggle kids, we juggle work. Um, we might have a little, like I, we've spoken that I, I teach a TAFE to put a bit of extra income to pay off the business loans, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'm, I'm running everywhere and this, this can dry us out. So at the end of the day, it's like the last thing I really want to do is open my computer and study. So to put time aside and to put structure aside, A, it not only helps to balance that energy that's kind of flying out of control and bringing worry and insomnia, et cetera, et cetera, but, but it also um, it gives you some structure and gives you some boundaries and can much... Um, support your learning wholeheartedly and also support your life because then you've got that structure and it carries through. Mm, I love that. And I totally agree with the students we have as well. We see that too. And we have a very structured process of going through the program because most of ours is online or yeah. a huge, a huge component of it is online, but you're absolutely right. For a lot of people learning anything is about not just learning, but learning how to learn. Definitely. And the process, the process of organising your life in a way that you can become a lifelong learner after finishing a program, still continuing to flourish within yourself, to grow and to learn, yeah. to have that time to set aside to nurture and flourish yourself, I think that is also a really important thing to get out of any kind of learning that we do, is just Definitely. how to learn, how to have a lifestyle that enables learning. Yeah. So I love that. Like if you were to look back at the journey that you've been on and the place that you've got to right now, Looking at all those challenges, we've talked about them a little bit. You've obviously had a whole lot of success along the way too, where you've overcome a lot of the challenges to get to where yes. you are right now. What would you say is like the number one thing that you would tell a, a younger or maybe um, just a, someone who's starting out or a bit earlier on their journey than you are, what would you tell them as far as the business side of things goes that's the most important thing you've learned from your journey? Oh, listen to your gut. <laughs> it's all about gut health in Ayurveda. When, when my intuition kicks in and it's just niggling, I listen. And we, we dodged a major curveball the other day. We were going to buy some units. And I'm talking about um, $300,000. I'm talking for us, that's huge. And um, they just weren't going to be out of supply. 
and we just dodged a curveball. We just, my husband and I decided they just weren't the right ones. I don't know how we decided like council telling me the wrong information you would expect that they they know they understand they're the experts just just listen and and then and then keep going because there's uh, like I'm surprised I'm not gray <laughs> there have been so many times that I've just gone do I really want this I, I can't do this anymore um and looking at the effect on my family and I'm um, I love my kids and knowing that it's take this business is taking me away from them but at the same time they know what ayurveda is they know they my kids get facials mm. and she's five years old you know um and and that that's priceless because because i didn't have that so that they're growing up in this um holistic therapeutic world so so two things listen to your gut and just keep going and know yeah. it's gonna be okay and yeah. what a perfect partnership between those two things too. Because I know a, a lot of massage therapists, a lot of wellness practitioners, they really are highly intuitive. It's part yeah. of the role of the job quite often yeah. is that you treat intuitively. And so being able to trust that and bring that as a level of confidence into making business decisions as well, I think that's a really fantastic sort of partnering. It's, it's having a holistic life within your business. When oh, you can absolutely. trust that gut to be able to move your foot in business. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today, Sarah. It's been Thank really you. great hearing your story. So excited with where you are right <laughs> now. And I know the next steps for you are going to still be really big, really exciting as you move through the rest of the adventure. So best of luck with it. And thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye. See ya. See ya.